I need ranting fuel. Fiery ginger beer. No added sugar. Get the reference? Good. <sighs> Jurassic World. about Jurassic World. Here's my Jurassic World review. There'll be no spoilers until the very end and I'm sure I'll be talking about this for a very long time. I have a lot to say about Jurassic World. Um, the the follow-up, the sequel, the, uh, the reboot of the Jurassic Park franchise which started back in 1993 with Steven Spielberg directing and it was it was a classic. Um, I've got the, the film right here. Jurassic Park, a Steven Spielberg film. Uh, one of the best 90s movies by far, you know, um, one of the best blockbuster popcorn films ever made and just um, just a brilliant film. Uh, you know, I think that uh, with films that are like, like this, you know, they entertain in, in so many different ways. I mean, there are films that will entertain you on one level or two levels, but this one entertains on at least three levels for me. It entertains you in the fact that you're seeing something that is larger than life and is spectacular and awesome and takes you to another world, um, but it's also grounded in some kind of reality, so it makes you feel like, oh, it could happen, and uh, you kind of get sucked into it. Uh, entertains you in the way that it's funny and it just you know gets a nice escape from life and it also entertains you just from a pure action standpoint and just the the emotions that you go through being tense and excited and seeing all this stuff going on Jurassic Park is an absolute classic brilliant film filled with so many memorable characters you know you got Richard Attenborough, Jeff Goldblum, Sam Neill, um, plenty others even the, the small supporting parts are memorable like Samuel L. Jackson um, that guy from Third Rock from the Sun, you know, uh, 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 didn't say the magic word, that guy. You know, even he's memorable in the film. You know, every little character uh, stands out in a way. Well, not every little character, but most of them. And Jurassic World is the fourth film in the series, and I just... <sighs> I was not digging it. Um, the trailers came out, was not impressed. You know, the CGI just didn't look great. It looked bad. It looked really bad. And I thought, okay... Um, Maybe the shots aren't finished, you know, but then why would you put them in the trailer? I don't know, and I'm sure that even the director, Colin uh, Trevorrow, or Tre Trevorrow, I don't know how you pronounce his name, but uh, the director, we'll just call him the director from now on. The director said, I think even said that um, the shot of the Jurassic World logo above the, the, the park entrance wasn't fully finished, or something like that. Either way, uh, I just wasn't digging it, you know. Um, I wasn't that interested, um, but of course I'm here now in Wales, um, came back for a visit, my fiance has now flown back uh, home to Norway where we live together and so I'm alone for a few weeks and uh, got really down yesterday so I thought you know I'm just going to use the bus ticket I already have because I went to Cardiff to see her off and I thought I'm going to go see Jurassic World at View Cinema in Cardiff because it's only £4. It's now £4 for any film, uh, any time, any showing, any day. So that's cool. I uh, went in at 8 o'clock at night and it, of course it was opening night yesterday which was uh, the 11th of June 2015. Uh, which is just a day off from the uh, uh, the exact date of the release of Jurassic Park back in 1993, I believe. It was um, released on the 12th of June, uh, 1993, something like that. Uh, so there was a nice synchronicity going on there. But when I got to the cinema, it was packed. The queue was going out of the, the lobby. I was like, what is going on here? Well, obviously I knew what was going on, but I mean, I'd mean, i never seen anything like this in a cinema in Cardiff for years. I mean, I can't even remember when. You know, maybe... Maybe one of the Star Wars films, but um, I, I think it's because it's a smaller cinema, though. It's a smaller cinema, and because it has this new four-pound deal that everyone's going there. Probably that's probably what it was. But it took me 20 minutes to get a ticket. But of course, the the trailers in the UK are 40 fucking minutes long, so um, that's something I don't miss about going to see films in the UK. Um, so I didn't miss anything. I got in, great cinema, great screen, awesome, and the film started. Yeah, so the film opens with a shot of an egg. I'm not going to go through the whole film, obviously, but you know uh, the egg starts to crack, 
and the, the, the shattering of the eggshell was really nicely done and then a claw comes out and not so nicely done and didn't really this didn't really mix well with the egg basically um, and again all CG shot all digital and you know it was done well but I mean some bits of it just right from the get-go I just felt like mmm you know um, so the film opens and the story is pretty simple you have um, Jurassic World you know which was what was Jurassic Park is on the same island Isle of Sauna from the first Jurassic Park film uh, you know it's Hammond's dream to have this park open with all these people coming to see these dinosaurs it's now a reality uh, apparently it's been uh, within the, the context of the film it's been open for about 10 years now opened in 2005 and it's now called Jurassic World I like that I like the title Jurassic World I like the progression I like the idea um, and I love the idea of just the story in general, the fact that the park was open now. It's something different, something we'd never seen before. It wasn't a rehash. Well, actually, it kind of is a rehash. And there's going to be a lot of contradiction in this video, so uh, that's the first one. Ding! Um, but yeah, it's it felt fresh, even though it was very similar, if that makes sense. It doesn't really, again, another contradiction. But uh, you have these two young boys, uh, one of them who was in The Kings of Summer, which was really good a couple of years ago, and his younger brother who played the kid in Iron Man 3, who helps us, it's Tony Stark out in Tennessee, I believe. Um, he was great, he's one of the best actors in the whole film, I thought, the young kid. And these brothers, they go to Jurassic World to visit their aunt, who works there, played by uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, uh, Ron Howard's daughter. And she's the, the lead female role of the film, she kind of runs Jurassic World. Um, she doesn't own it, but she kind of oversees everything. And she hasn't really got time for her nephew, so they turn up and they just kind of go and see all the attractions on their own, basically, with a minder while she's, you know, trying to sell the, you know, money and ad endorsement deals and stuff for Jurassic World. And then we have Chris Pratt, who's a guy who has trained these velociraptors uh, on the island, and he's kind of, they've imprinted on him from birth, and so he kind of can control them, but there's also that element where, you know, if he turns his back on them, they probably would just kill him. So I like that because from the trailers, it just seemed like he had total control over them. I didn't like that at all. But there was the element of danger there, which I liked at the beginning anyway. So the, the two boys, they go to Jurassic World. They're going out, they're seeing all the sights. And uh, Bryce Dallas Howard's character, I forget her name now, she is um, showing the, the guy who owns the, the Jurassic World, this uh, Indian guy. Um, she's showing him this new dinosaur that they've made, they've created. And this is another thing I had a big problem with, was the fact that you had uh, uh, new dinosaurs in the, in the trailer. Uh, and I've read that um, you know they're not even dinosaurs that have ever existed before. They've just created them to make them bigger and better and stuff. And I just thought, you don't need to fuck with you know the uh, the wonder that are dinosaurs that actually exist. You know, um, you can you know use the ones that we know about and have seen and have living proof of you know their existence, like in Jurassic Park. But no, they created this new T Rex hybrid called the I Rex, the the Indominus Rex. Um, but when the film opened, within the first 20 minutes, this was actually explained, and, and Bryce Dallas Howard is saying that, uh, you know, to these guys who's trying to sell, you know, get an endorsement deal with them, I think it's Verizon, and uh, and then they're saying, so what's this new dinosaur all about then, how do you do this? She's like, well, gene splicing and so on, but we need a new attraction every few years, otherwise the interest dies down and we don't make money, so we needed to make a dinosaur that isn't, you know, that never did exist, and we've, you know, again, spliced these different... Uh, genes together and bits of DNA and stuff, which is what they did in the original Jurassic Park film. They they said that that um, they didn't have a complete DNA you know uh, match for these dinosaurs, and they filled it in you know where they could. Um, but this time they've gone overboard, and, and they won't tell anyone what they've done. But they've made this Indominus Rex, who you get glimpses of it throughout the film, and it it, it's not, it doesn't look like anything you've seen before. It looks slightly white at times, and uh, and you learn all these things about it, and it basically escapes, and it goes on a rampage across the island, and that is the story. You know, the, the two young boys, they, they have to kind of survive. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, she has to kind of get control of the situation and make sure that the park doesn't shut down, and that all the people are safe, and then Chris Pratt has to kind of step in to help out as well, because he's the macho, tough guy of the film. And then we have Vincent D'Onofrio, who plays a character who is the head of security, and he basically wants to weaponize the dinosaurs. He wants to turn the Velociraptor pack into, you know, like a SWAT team, basically, and send them out to the battlefield to take out the enemy, which Chris Pratt doesn't want to do. You know, he's raised these Velociraptors, or, or he's been there throughout their whole life, and he doesn't want that to happen. And uh, so it was promising. It was a promising start. Um, although when they first got to the island, um, the two kids, they're on a boat this time, not a helicopter like in the first film. 
and the camera pans around, we see the island again. You know, we haven't seen this island for, uh, I guess, 22 years, you know? I mean, maybe there were shots of it in the other two films, I can't remember, but this is the first time coming back to Isla Sauna. And the music was just like a, a low kind of horn, just a... Mm. It wasn't like that, but it was, it was just it was very dull. And I was like, wow, that was... That was an anticlimax. We get to see the island again and the music, and I thought they couldn't use the dun 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 dun. And I thought, well, okay, maybe they don't want to use that theme. Maybe they want to move in, in, into new music and be its own thing and not be too attached to the first one. I thought, you know, I respect that. Okay, fair enough. And then they got into the hotel on dress on the island, and then the dun 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 dun, and they're just walking through the hotel room. And I'm like. What? This doesn't fit at all. But then the young boy opens up the hotel uh, balcony door, and it, it opens up, and you see the all the you know the, the attractions and stuff. So it kind of fit. But at first, I was worried. Then, like they were really just yeah. But anyway, again, I could go full into this. I could go full on into this. But you know, I'm gonna try and cut it down as much as I can. For me, um, there's a lot of things I didn't like about the film. Um, you know, Vincent D'Onofrio's character. I thought the idea was good, I thought some of the writing for him wasn't good, and some of his delivery wasn't good, sometimes it was, sometimes it wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't really much of a, I mean, I wanted to see him get his get his at the end, basically, but not enough to be classified as a really good antagonist, I don't think, uh, and then there's another character who becomes more of an antagonist, and I like that little twist, but mainly, you just, it's the dinosaurs, really, that you're there to see in the cinema, and that's kind of one of the main things that I have wrong with the film. I, the problem I have with the film is that the CGI was ropey at times. Again, sometimes it looked great, not often, you know, most of the time it just looked pretty good. But sometimes it just didn't look good at all. And again, with a film that's so deeply saturated with um, computer generated effects, you are going to get, you know, parts that aren't as strong as others, you know. Um, but for me, I just feel like if you're going to do a film like this, you've got to go all in, you have got to put in the time. Look at a film like Gravity, which is essentially a completely computer generated film, but just with actors' faces literally comped into the film. You know, there's only like about, I think, two or three minutes of Gravity where you actually see all of Sandra Bullock's body in the flesh, the rest is just her face painted onto a digital body with digital ships and, you know, all that stuff in Gravity. And then, you know, in Gravity, they, I watched the special features, they wanted to change the first ten minutes of the film slightly and it took them about three months to re-render it. Three months to re-render, uh, you know, to obviously make all the effects and stuff, but to re I mean, it's just, they put so much work into gravity, years it took them to make it, and it, sh and it worked, you know, at no point did I question the graphics. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, another great example of a, a kind of blockbuster film where the, the CGI is just phenomenal. Again, there are a few, a few bits in that that aren't as, as good as the other, but, you know, for the most part, it's so strong. Whereas Jurassic World, I just felt like a lot of it wasn't that great. Um, it was enough to you know to, to keep me entertained, and I wasn't brought out of it too much. But at times there'd be something I'd be like, oh, this is one shot in particular. I have to mention it. They have the Velociraptors right, and they they're in their pen, and there's holes in the pen so they can stick their heads through, uh, and then they kind of clamp their heads down in like a metal like muzzle basically like steel. Um, not like you're forcibly, so it's hurting them, but their head is locked in place so they can't bite you. And um, Vincent D'Onofrio's character's there, and he's trying to smooth the head of one of these Velociraptors, and the Velociraptor's looking at him. And he puts his hand there, and, you know, it's like, what do you do if your hand touches something? That, it interacts with it, you know, you, you can see it's touching whatever the surface is, you know, usually it's someone's hand, or it's, you know, it's a living thing. But it looked like this, like... You know, it just, it was fucking terrible. It was awful. Um, and I just thought, man, if I was if I was directing that, I would just say, delete that shot. Get them to do it again or just delete it. I'll, I'll cut around it because it just is too unconvincing. It looked like shit. And then I thought, why didn't they just make the head? You know, you've got a great solution here. You don't have to make the full body because it's only the head on screen. Just make an animatronic head, you know. Even, even digitize the eyes and the nostrils if you have to. But, you know, something for the actors to actually touch and, and tangible on screen so you can tell that it's real. That really, that really bothered me. And then about 15 minutes later, there's this huge dinosaur that's injured. And Chris Pratt comes up to it and he kind of strokes its head because it's, it's dying. And it was an animatronic and it looked great, and it was real, and I bought into the scene, I bought into the emotion, hook, line, and sinker, because it was real, and it was on screen. 
I mean, obviously with these flying dinosaurs and the T-Rex stomping around, you have to go digital, but I mean, they're just, that's the thing about Jurassic Park, again, um, the original. A lot of that was, was real stuff, you know. The CGI was used sparingly, and it was used in the right moments, and it was cut right as well. Um, but, you know, yeah, for the most part, I mean, it was fine, but there was just some parts of the CGI for me that just weren't up to snuff, and uh, really bothered me. And then you have the characters themselves. Chris Pratt basically spends most of the movie just going like this. You know, I mean, I, I get that, you know, I just, I wasn't really a fan of Chris Pratt's character. You know, I think he's a good actor, but I just, there, I wasn't really buying into his character. And then Bryce Dallas Howard, even though she, her acting was great in the film, I thought she was really good. She conveyed the fear. And, um, yeah, I just thought her character w was well performed. But the way it was written, I'm not talking about the lines, but the, the, the arc of her character, for me, was just so unrealistic. You have this this woman who is a businesswoman, you know, and, and looks like she's never, like, scuffed her knee in her life, basically. And within about, you know, 45 minutes, an hour into the film, uh, there's like a complete switch. Boom! She suddenly is a capable woman who, who, who's, who's doing all this stuff. And uh, there's just a, this, a scene in the film where it's just a complete, like, 180. And you're just like, okay, where did that come from? People are going to kill me for this. But it, it just seemed like they were like, oh, we need to have an independent, uh, strong, dominant female role in this film. And I don't think it needed it. I don't think her character needed to be that strong female type. Um, I think her character needed to kind of be along for the ride. Um, obviously to grow stronger throughout the film. And I know that's what the idea was. But for me the transition was just too jarring. That it seemed unrealistic. And it just seemed poorly done to me. You know. But I thought Bryce Dallas Howard was actually really good. She, her along with the young kid. I think his name's Ty Simpkins. They were the two best actors in the whole film. Uh, she really, you know, there's a scene where a dinosaur's coming up and, and she's just uh, silently crying without overdoing it. And I thought she was great in that in that sense. Um, and her relationship with, with Chris Pratt in the film? Ugh, it was terrible. It was like their interaction with each other wasn't much chemistry. And the writing for their scenes together was just, oh man, really just, I mean, there's, there's a scene like, I mean... Not spoiling anything to say that, that neither of them die in the film. I mean, they're the two lead characters, but you know, towards the end, you know, she's just like, "So, what do we do now?" And he's just like, "Well, da 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 da," and it was just like, I mean, even people in the, the cinema were kind of snickering, like that was just a terrible line, you know. The writing was really inconsistent for me because there were some great lines in it. I loved the things that were explained, like you know, the the whole idea of having to, uh, you know. Uh, engineer these dinosaurs that haven't existed before to make money and stuff and it kind of uh, comments on just kind of uh, what's the word um, not the entertainment but um, industry but more like just the the pop culture no I mean, what, there's a word and it's completely gone from my head right now and I'm not going to edit this out because I'm sure it's going to come into my head at any second now commercialization yeah it's like you know like the I don't know I just don't know. I'm working myself into into circles here, but you know, it, it, I like the way that it commented on the way the world works and how you know. And again, it almost was like a, a meta thing where it's like it relates to the film as well, you know. And uh, there's a guy who works in the control room of Jurassic World who has this Jurassic Park T-shirt on, and he's like, "Oh, this is vintage. Got it from eBay. One hundred and fifty dollars. You know, you, you can't beat the classic or whatever it was." And I like little stuff like that. In fact, I'd say they they might have even leaned on the original too much in terms of nostalgia. I mean, there's a lot of, of callbacks to the original film. Obviously, it takes place in the same location, but there's a lot more than I was expecting there to be. I did enjoy it, but there's a few things where I thought, well, they're, they're kind of pushing it a bit too much here. And like, this is where the first film was. This is where the first film was. That's from the first film. Look at this from the first film. Um, and I've read that the, direct, the director um, sees this as a sequel to Jurassic Park and, and wants to kind of push two and three aside. Um, which, you know, I, I actually like Lost World a lot. I really, really enjoy that film. And Jurassic Park 3, I can't really comment on because I think the last time I saw that was when it came out 10 years ago. So I can't really comment on that. It wasn't that memorable. I'd say this film, Jurassic World, is unmemorably memorable. Uh, you know, there was a lot about it that, that was just stock. But... 
I still really enjoyed it. So I don't know why I've just ranted for almost 20 minutes about this. Well, it hasn't been all ranting, but I've just gone over so much negative stuff. But I still really enjoyed it because I just, I dug the story, you know, and the, again, it was inconsistently um, bad, I'd say. Because there were bits of it that came in and were enjoyable, and it was enough to balance it out. Where I didn't feel like at the end it was a, it was a waste of a you know a cinema ticket. You know I was entertained. I was really entertained, and the ending was awesome. The last twenty minutes or so were awesome. I had problems with it, but it was just it was it was indulgent. But I loved it. You know, um, if you've seen the film, you know what I mean. And it's to do with the Indominus Rex and the big showdown at the end and how they have to stop the Indominus Rex. And yeah. Uh, that's about it for me. I would say that the film's about a, a 7 out of 10, uh, a 3.5 out of 5, and you might be thinking, well, that's quite high considering you've just said all these bad things about it. But, you know, these are isolated incidents, and I suppose in, in some of the characters' cases, incidents that go across the whole film, I felt like a lot of the characters just weren't anywhere near as memorable as the characters in the previous films, or at least in Jurassic Park. Um, you know, yeah, I mean, really, the only two characters I'd say were that good were Bryce Dallas Howard and Ty Simpkins and even then their characters weren't that memorable if you know what I mean so yeah I, I think the new cast didn't really do much for me uh, you know Chris Pratt gets to kind of be the the leaving man that he's destined to be now and um, I do like Chris Pratt I, I just think that uh, in this one that he just didn't have much to work with to be honest apart from being just the guy who, who gets things done and even then, his character just seemed to be not written that well, you know. Uh, they want to... I mean, you've seen the shot in the trailers where he's riding on the bike with all the Velociraptors. He's part of the pack, basically. And the idea there is that, you know, they want to take the Velociraptors to, to stop the Indominus Rex. And Vincent D'Onofrio is like, yeah, we're going to send out the Raptors. We're, we're, we're going to weaponize them. And Chris Pratt's like, there's no way you're doing that. You know, you're not doing that with my Raptors. And Vincent D'Onofrio is like, well, we're doing it with or without you. And it just cuts to Chris Pratt going, okay, so we're going to go from here. Like, he, his morals just, like, don't stand at all. He just he just he bends over for Vincent D'Onofrio instantly. Um, and it was just like, oh, okay. I just, yeah, I felt like the writing of the, some of the characters wasn't that consistent. Um, and he's on his motorbike, and I thought, I'm just waiting for a character to go, wow, he's so badass on that bike. And literally 10 seconds later, one of the kids goes, He's so badass. And I was like, oh my god, they just said that. They just, oh no, she, yeah, they, well, I won't spoil it, but yeah, basically, you know, paraphrasing, he says, oh, he's so badass. And it's like, <sighs> on the nose there. Um, I would recommend it though, and fans of the franchise would definitely enjoy it. I enjoyed it a lot, you know. I would almost call it a guilty pleasure because I think there's so much that's wrong with it, but I still really liked it. So. Yeah, it is what it is. Um, definitely go see it if you haven't already. You're probably, if you're watching a review this long, then you've probably already seen it. But yeah, I figured I'd just give, give my all on this one, tell you everything I had to say about it. There's some pointless, I mean, there's a, a Jimmy Fallon cameo that for me, I'm sure they just did that so that Jimmy Fallon could, could kind of promote it on his show and that they could get more interest in it, you know. And it was just a bit shoehorned in and wasn't even that funny either. I mean, he he makes an appearance on this video screen and he's doing all this funny g gag stuff whole cinema was just silent <laughs> and the, the two brothers are watching this and they're just like silent as well and it was like wow yeah that's another thing the humor you know i mean these days uh in in like the last few years all the big kind of blockbuster films they need to have a lot of humor you know like marvel have really kind of just pushed it to another level now and you have guardians of the galaxy which pushed it too far into that direction you know i thought guardians of the galaxy was awesome and then James Gunn put in that bit where, you know, the end of, of, of the big villain of the film was Chris Pratt going, dance off, bro. <sighs> you, there can be too much humor, you know, and in Jurassic World, there wasn't too much, but the first hour and a half, flat, absolutely flat. No one in the cinema was laughing, maybe a few chuckles, and it was a packed house. The, the the jokes were not hitting. They they were flying past the the target until the last half hour when there were a couple of funny bits that actually worked. Um, so yeah, <laughs> Jurassic Park really inconsistent, kind of unmemorable but kind of memorable at the same time. It was indulgent and fun, and the ending for me is probably what is just some conflicting emotions with it. I'll definitely watch it again. Definitely pick it up on Blu-ray at some point when it's really cheap in a few years. But um, you know. 
I, I just still think the original can't be can't be beat really. And again, it follows the same formula as the original. You know, get to the park, everything seems fine, shit goes down, you need to rescue some kids, um, and then there's a big show off, it's showdown at the end basically. I also felt like there was no di no real element of threat. You know, uh, this characters are just walking around the jungle, you know, looking for the kids, and there are dinosaurs everywhere. And I just thought like, hmm. It, it just felt like, oh, well, they're not going to die because they're the main characters. So I didn't really feel any tension at all, even in the big the big climax at the end where there are dinosaurs everywhere and, you know, people get killed, you know, in the, in the, in the, in the park. And I just didn't feel the ramifications of that at all. It, it just felt like just a, a death count, basically, or not even a death count. It just felt like, oh, dead, 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 dead. And then the main characters, but they're not going to die because they're the main characters. And, you know, that scene in the, in the original with the Velociraptors in the kitchen, fucking genius, you know? There was never anything like that, never any tension that made you think, oh my god, they're going to they're gonna get, get, you know? There's a bit where they do get trapped, but it's like, okay, they're definitely dead now, so what? how are they going to get out of this? And it felt like they wrote themselves into too much of a corner, and then silly stuff starts happening. And, but I still enjoyed it, I don't know, oh my god, it's so conflicting. Um, yeah, Jurassic World, that's it, that's my thoughts on it. I'm going to briefly talk spoilers for a couple of minutes and then end the video. So if you haven't seen Jurassic World, go check it out. Don't be just dissuaded by my comments. I think a lot of people will really enjoy it, especially fans of the original. Um, there is a lot of fan service in there, and so I hope you enjoy it. And if you're wondering about the Jeff Goldblum cameo that uh, the Universal have been teasing... I would say, if you were to ask me, is he in the film, I would say yes and no. So you can take that what you will. And now we'll move into spoiler territory. Thanks for watching. So spoiler territory, Jeff Goldblum. Uh, we see him for about two seconds on the back of his book that someone's reading on the monorail, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, but considering the universe will kind of post this kind of online viral marketing Easter egg about his book, I think it led people to believe that he'd be in the film and he wasn't, um, which is a shame. But it was cool to see his face there for a few seconds. Um, spoiler talk, of course, the other big cameo of the film is the T-Rex. Yep, the T-Rex from the original Jurassic Park film is still there. And he plays a big part in the end where we have the big fight between the Indominus Rex and the T-Rex. Which was awesome, it was brilliant, it was like a Godzilla film, you know, just dinosaurs duking it out. It felt scrappy, it didn't feel too choreographed, it felt awesome and it was a great just blast to watch it on screen i love that it was just one of my favorite scenes in an action film for the past couple of years probably um just really in, again from someone who's a fan of the original seeing the original t-rex come in it was kind of like a you felt like it was an old friend you know and it was like yeah you know the t-rex is back motherfucker and, and then you know they have their fight in it and then you have the, the velociraptors they're getting stuck in as well and had a couple of hero moments with the velociraptors which was yeah and then of course the bit where you know, the Indominus Rex gets gets eaten by the big, uh, the big water dinosaur, and the Velociraptor looks over to Chris Pratt, and Chris Pratt's like, and you, and it's almost like the Velociraptor's gonna go. <laughs> it's like, okay, the Velociraptor is looking at you dead in the eye, and you just go, and it somehow understands exactly what you mean. It understands the subtle emotional sentiment coming out of Chris Pratt, and it walk and it just runs off. Yeah, right. I mean, that's the thing with the Velociraptors as well. You know, we're, we're trained to believe from these films that these are absolute killing machines. That's the first scene in the first film, isn't it, where Sam Neill is telling that kid how it will gut you and it'll slice your guts open, and you know, it will it will kill you instantly on sight. You know, and these are deadly animals, deadly creatures. And the first time we see them in Jurassic World, they're being they're, they're, they're like dogs, they're, they're being trained for food and stuff, and it kind of takes away the element of the the viciousness of the Velociraptor, I think. Um, but I did love all the stuff with the Indominus Rex, the fact that it could camouflage itself, that it had uh, uh, gene elements from a cuttlefish and from a Velociraptor, which is another twist near the end, that's why it kind of, the Velociraptors don't go after it, because they, they have some kind of connection. But again, then, the, the, they, there's a, they're all, the humans are here, the Indominus Rex is here, the Velociraptors are here, the humans are definitely dead. And then the Velociraptors are like, oh wait a minute, Death. the Indominus Rex is challenging the humans. Are they going to eat the humans? Let's go against the Indominus Rex. It just, it felt like they wrote themselves into a corner with that one. It didn't make too much sense and it just seemed like the the animal, the, the Velociraptors themselves, the pack, were a bit bipolar in, in who, they were, who they were with and who they were loyal to. Um, but, you know, 
Still enjoyed it a lot, and that is that is my thoughts on Jurassic World. I don't know what more I can say, really. Um, probably a few more things, but I'll leave it at that. It's been rambling for over 30 minutes, and it's probably going to take me a day to render and upload this from here because I'm now using my laptop, which takes like three times as long to render a video, and YouTube takes about five times longer to upload as well over here. The internet sucks, and the more I talk, the longer it's going to take. So. That's it. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Jurassic World or the Jurassic Park series in general. Hope I didn't ramble too long about stuff that I don't really know what I'm talking about. But I mean, like the thing I said about Bryce Dallas Howard. I'm not saying that um, you shouldn't have a strong female character. I'm just saying I felt like they felt the need to just make her like a, a like a badass, like from zero to badass in an instant, and it just felt like yeah, you know. Well, hey, spoiler talk, the, the reason is because, you know, Chris Pratt is being pinned down by this pterodactyl or whatever, the, the speed, the big flying dinosaur, and she just grabs his, 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 his rifle and just, poof, and just shoots it like that. I mean, there's no, like, oh, oh, God, she shoots it like, oh, my God, I just shot it, you know, like, oh, what, what, what am I doing? No, she's just like, poof, and then they just look at each other, and then they just kiss, and it's like, what the, where did that come from? This is, like, 40 minutes into the film. Like... Their, their romance and her transition from meek businesswoman, well not meek because she was I guess strong in the, in the sense of um, you know the way she runs things but you know not a very you know get, getting dirty kind of you know uh, into the action kind of person. But anyway, I'm just rambling bullshit at this point but thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, don't burn me at the stake for anything I might have said about <laughs> strong female characters because I think that um, the film world is much better off with strong female characters, but I don't think it served her character best in this one. So there we go. Thank you for uh, for watching. I've already said that so, so many times. Uh, I just get worked up. I get worked up. And I, and I feel so conflicted again. Like, did I love it? Did I hate it? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I'm signing off. See ya. Really nice guy, <laughs> looks after his friends, he only chucks him about the place a couple of times on the weekend, <laughs> yeah, he's alright by me, <laughs> apart from the fact he throws cans of Colin into a tree, <laughs> yeah he's really cool.